Father in heaven, thank you for a beautiful new day. Thank you for giving us life and for this opportunity to learn more of you. Lord, this morning, I pray for the Holy Spirit to pour down in great abundance upon each one of us. Fill us, Lord, fully with your presence, with the presence of Jesus. And Lord, please protect our minds from the evil one, that everything that you want to be conveyed to us might be received and not snatched away. O oh Lord, uh, we entrust ourselves into your hands, and we want to surrender all. So help us to have this experience today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to ta talk about something absolutely important for our experience. Today is a foundational message, and I pray that it might impact you for eternity. We just sang about surrendering all. And I hope that you are understanding that it's all about giving all to Jesus. When we give all to Jesus, then He can will and to do of His good pleasure in our lives and through us. But what is it when we give Jesus everything? What is it that we own? What is it that we have that is ours? Water, sunshine, comes from the Lord. Air comes from the Lord. Strength that we have to work comes from the Lord. Everything comes from the Lord. So what's ours? The only thing that is ours is our sin. That is the only thing that is ours. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are sinners because we were born into this world of sin. And of course, we have chosen sin, right? Each and every one of us. None are exempt from sin. Sin is what is ours. But Jesus says, give me all of your sins. If we simply give him our sins, then he is able to wash them, cleanse us, take them from us. But how many times do we ask for forgiveness and then we take them back? I say, oh Lord, I don't truly believe that you've forgiven me. Oh, let me pray again. Let me ask for forgiveness again. Because surely the, my sin is too big for you to have taken care of so easily with just a word. We need to give God all of our sins. But there is something else that is ours. <coughs> when we experience pain, hurt, we hold on to it as if it is ours. But Jesus also says, give me your pain. Give me your hurt. Give me your wounds and I will heal you. I will give you the balm in Gilead to heal your sin sick soul. <coughs> Are we holding on to our pain? Are we holding on to resentment? Are we holding on to unforgiveness? This morning, my topic is about forgiveness. When I was in the leper colonies in China, I told a few of you my testimony. About nine years ago, God called me to visit the leper colonies in China I was just visiting for 10 days on my way back to America <laughs> to start a job. I had gotten a dream job of mine to, to be a principal of a school. I used to be a teacher. And I decided to stop by China for 10 days to see this leprosy ministry. You know the leprosy that we've talked about in the Bible? Well, that disease is still present today. 
Today, there's medication that's able to render the leprosy inactive, but still, the people who have contracted leprosy have been ostracized. I had the privilege of going there, and God completely changed my life. I went there, and I saw true Christians. I studied the Bible in a way I had never studied the, the before. And it was in one of those Bible studies that um, the speaker was asking this question. Is there anybody that you might see in heaven that you would not want to meet? If you made it to heaven and you saw someone, would there be anybody in your life that you would say, oh no, I can't believe they're here. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see them. And if there is somebody like that, that person is somebody that you hold bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness toward. And so, I took that time to, that day to search my heart. Lord, is there anybody that I have not forgiven? And somebody came to mind. When I was a teacher, I experienced something really very tough. I was very young, very immature. And I had some conflict with some parents of the students. And uh, we were trying to work on that conflict, but the principal at the time Oh, I thought he was such a horrible principal and leader because, you know what, he wasn't solving the problems. He wasn't resolving the problems. He was listening to their side, you know, separately, and then talking to me, but not making a stand, not solving the problem. And I thought, oh, if he had been a better leader, the results would have been different. But unfortunately, with my immaturity, Aha, uh -huh, I did, yeah, very foolish things. And it snowballed to get worse and worse and worse. And even after five years of giving my lifeblood for this school, I did above and beyond what a normal teacher would do, you know, coaching basketball and volleyball, creating a club, a culture club, and, you know, this, that, and the other. You know, all of a sudden, without going through any system of reconciliation and restoration, uh, suddenly, the superintendent came out from after a school board meeting and said to me, Joy, we decided we are not going to renew your contract. That's a fancy word for saying, you're fired. You're not coming back next year. I was absolutely devastated. That spiraled me down into depression, into despair into uh, questioning my identity, my value, my worth. But it caused me to be angry. And it caused to be angry at the injustice. And who was a scapegoat? The person that I could blame? The principal. And so I held on to that. But for years after that, I was trying so hard to be free from this pain. It was something that affected me very deeply. <laughs> I went to so many self-help retreats, seminars, you name it, I went there. My friend said, I don't know anyone who goes to more seminars and workshops than you because I was trying to find healing. This was only a symptom that had come out because of the woundings in my heart from even childhood. Okay? As I started work, as I got into relationships, that's when I realized that I had issues. I realized that I did not have the value and worth, the understanding of my value and worth in Jesus. So I always struggled my whole life with feeling like I didn't fit in. Like I was not good enough. That I had to do things in order to prove my value and worth. This all led to showing me how much I needed Jesus.
It was painful, let me tell you. But by God's grace, he has given me healing, restoration, and truth. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for each and every one of you. So that day, I was thinking about whom I would not want to see in heaven. And this man came up in my mind. And I remembered. I remembered him. And I had gone to a general conference uh, session, okay? A big meeting of Seventh-day Adventists once every five years. And guess what? I saw what I thought was him in the distance. But he's an identical twin. <laughs> and so when I saw this man, I was like, oh, no. I wanted to run the other way, literally. But then I was like, ah, oh, don't do that. And so I just walked that way, and he didn't recognize me, so I was like, oh, it's his twin. <laughs> but that's what clued me in to the fact that I still held on to resentment to this man. So that day, I repented to the Lord for holding on to unforgiveness, for resenting this man, realizing that actually it was my problem. It was not his problem. And I confessed to the Lord, I repented, and after that, I was free. If I see him in, in heaven, I will be happy. I will be glad that he is in heaven because forgiveness. I've forgiven him for what I think that he has done. But more than that, God has given me peace and he has given me healing. What does the Bible say about forgiving? If you don't forgive, your heavenly Father will forgive you. If you don't forgive others, your heavenly Father cannot forgive you. That's a sobering thought, isn't it? We want to be forgiven. And then sometimes we say, I need to force myself to forgive. I have to forgive them. I have to forgive them because I want God to forgive me. Something else. You have to do it from all your heart. But if you do not do it from all your heart, then it is not a true forgiveness, isn't it? And forgiveness cannot be generated from yourself. You cannot create forgiveness, but God, through His Holy Spirit, inspires you, convicts you to confess. And then you can experience that true confession, the true forgiveness. What else does the Bible say about forgiveness? How many times are we to forgive? One time? 70 times 7. 70 times 7. Back in Jesus' time, oh, they thought that forgiving three times was good. And so Peter was saying, Lord, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? Because that's like more than double, you know, what everyone thought. But Jesus said, no, 70 times 7. And that didn't represent exactly 490 times. <laughs> that represents a perfect forgiveness, a complete forgiveness. Imagine if somebody does the same thing to you, wrongs you 490 times and you forgive them every single time. It's almost like forgiving them for eternity, isn't it? God asks us for, for, for forgiving others completely. What else does the Bible say about forgiveness? Anything else come to mind? All right, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. If anyone is there, oh, for the sake of the recording, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32 says... Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be 
put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Amen? Amen. But we cannot generate this on our own. Love, forgiveness, tenderheartedness, peace, patience, all these are fruits of the Holy Spirit. So when we have the Holy Spirit in us, as we surrender all, then we can make that exchange. We give God our sins. We give God our bitterness and unforgiveness. And he, in turn, gives us forgiveness. He gives us kindness. He gives us letting go. To whom is forgiven much? <coughs> What is the response? To those who are forgiven much, what happens? They, in respond, they love much. Turn with me to Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And this is the story of Simon's feast. Simon the Pharisee had been healed of his leprosy. And he wanted to thank Jesus. And he invited Jesus for a feast. And when Mary Magdalene, who had been freed from seven de demons, who had been healed, who had been transformed, in Luke chapter 7, starting from verse 36, Jesus tells us the story of the difference of experiencing forgiveness and the response to that forgiveness. You may know the story. Luke 7 from verse 36. It says, One of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. And this ointment is supposed to be worth a whole year's wages. Whew. That's expensive. Verse 38. And she stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. You see, she believed Jesus' words. Jesus had told her disciples, Jesus had told his disciples, his followers, that he was going to be crucified, that he would die, but that he would resurrect on the third day. But his disciples did not want to believe that because they were looking for a physical king, someone to help them to free them from the Roman oppression. They didn't realize that Jesus came to save everyone from their sins to establish the spiritual kingdom but Mary this woman this sinner she believed and so she prepared this ointment that that people would use to um, embalm the bodies after death after you know for burial but she wanted to do it ahead of time before he died he wanted to she wanted to honor her Jesus with tears, with sincerity, she anointed Jesus' head. Verse 39 continues. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he says, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And let's say 
well, let's put it in terms of, you know, Australian dollars. One man owed $5,000 and one man owed $50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not <coughs> anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with, anoint, with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Friends, this is our story. Every story in the Bible is our story. But which character are we? Are we Simon or are we Mary? Have we been forgiven much? Or have we not realized the depth of our sins and the need, the desperate need for forgiveness? When we go to Jesus and we go to his feet, surrendering all, giving him all of our sins, our pain, then he is able to give in exchange so much love, forgiveness, restoration. And when you, when you experience that, what comes from your heart? When you experience when you experience and, ex and receive grace and mercy and forgiveness that is undeserved, what is the response of your heart? Have you ever experienced mercy? When you've deserved punishment? When you do something wrong, and you're expecting somebody to say, I can't believe you did that. You need to fix it. You need to... When you expect that, but the person says, that's okay. I understand. I forgive you. How do you feel? How do you feel? So happy, so grateful, so peaceful, so overwhelmed with gratitude. Ah, oh, that feeling. If you can think back to an experience when you've received this kind of grace and mercy, you feel love, don't you? You feel love toward that person. And you feel, wow, I want to be close to that person. I don't want to run away from them. I want to be close to them. <clears throat> to whom much is forgiven, they loveth even more. How much have you been forgiven? What did Jesus say on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As you experience pain, suffering, injustice, and you have felt this unforgiveness and bitterness, think about those people. They are not just humans acting of their own volition. 
when you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord, Savior, and Master, who is your master? Evil. Evil. Satan. When you don't have Jesus, you have Satan. Unknowingly. Unknowingly. And when you see people behaving in ways that are like Satan's ways, when you see people behaving in ways that are of hatred, of impatience, of injustice, of ignorance, as our parents have treated us as we were children with abuse, with verbal abuse, with lack of understanding, maybe even with neglect, giving us the messages that we are not value, valued, we're not valuable, we are not worth it, there's something wrong with us. Our parents did not know. They were influenced or ensnared, trapped, controlled by Satan. If they did not have Jesus and they were acting, behaving, speaking in these ways, they were being controlled by another force that is not Jesus. Can you understand that? If that is the case, as we look back, how can we blame them? As I was growing up, I always blamed my parents. It's always easy to blame, isn't it? I said, well, if my parents, oh man, if they were American, they would have been, you know, better at communication. They would have told us that they loved us. They would have hugged us. They would have spent, you know, quality time with us. But later, as I understood that the battle is not against flesh and blood, that the battle is against spiritual principalities, evil wickedness in high places. It's Satan and his demons attacking, infiltrating, working to destroy, to kill, to steal. As I grew in my understanding, then I realized my parents did the best that they could do. If they had known better, wouldn't they have done it? If they had known better, would they have withheld anything good? No. That was a big shift for me. Instead of blaming my parents, I forgave them. Instead of blaming my parents, instead of blaming myself, I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not having known you. <laughs> forgive me for not having responded to you as you have, been, you have been revealing yourself to me. Forgive me. Restore me. Cleanse me. God is so faithful. Because when we surrender to Him, He takes us and leads us every single step of the way. In the last few years, well, actually, the few years has turned into nine years, almost a decade of giving myself fully to the Lord. It's incredible what the Lord has done. As I started this work of the Maker Heals, I worked with many different missionaries and different volunteers. And um, this took place in, a, in one of the Southeast Asian countries. And uh, from the very beginning, we had conflict. Even with people who follow the Lord, right? Conflict. Satan wants to get in wherever he possibly can. And there was this lady, she was in charge, but somehow, I rubbed her the wrong way. And to my face, she would say wonderful things. Joy, you are so talented. You are 
you know, the Lord is using you, all these things. But then to other people, she would say bad things and complain. And even back then, I struggled with my identity and my value and worth. And I said, what is wrong with this woman? I was so angry. Like, why does she have to say these crazy I called her a crazy woman. Well, why? She's crazy. Why is she coming up with all of these things that don't make any sense? I didn't realize at that time that the opposite of the Spirit of God within you, controlling you, is the Spirit of Satan controlling you. And so these conflicts kept going and going after a few years. And there was a time that I was in Indonesia. And I was doing, you know, um, a seminar on true education, you know, talking about the same things about surrender everything to the Lord, giving yourself to God, following his ways. And I had had an, a run in with her, you know, over the phone or over WhatsApp or something. And I had these thoughts of anger and bitterness and resentment towards her. And I said, Lord, how can I be preaching to this group of people when I have this going on internally in my heart? And so I started praying, Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please do something because I cannot change this. And it just convicted me just so strongly that I cannot preach the word of God if I have this unforgiveness in my heart. As I was praying, 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 then the Lord brought to me something that has changed my life. He taught me something. He said, choose to forgive. Joy, it's not about your feelings, and it's not about what the other person does or says. Choose to forgive. And with that, God kind of melted my heart. He broke my heart. I confessed. And in all sincerity, I wrote this message to her. I said, you know what? I wish that I was right in front of you today. I wish that I was with you in person, that I can wash your feet. I do not want to have anything between you and me. We are serving the Lord. We are doing this work together. I do not want to have any of these issues between us. And I said, please forgive me. Let's work together. And from that point, I made my decision to choose to forgive. Just because you choose to forgive doesn't mean that everything will turn out peachy. <laughs> the next conflict arose. Oh, what's, the, what's the immediate response? Oh, again, you know, right? Like it came up into my heart, like, oh, she's doing it again. Blah, blah, blah. And then I remembered, choose to forgive. Choose to forgive. My emotions calmed down. And I said, Lord, yes, I choose to forgive. And guess what? All those feelings psh, dissipated. I realized who was controlling her. And step by step, no matter what she would do, I would choose to forgive. I cannot tell you how incredibly liberating this made my life. And even in the future, when we had more a conflict and they came and she and her husband came and confronted me, I said, you know what? It's okay. Even if we have differences, it's okay. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. Let's work together. And after that, no problems. After that, I realized God allowed me to graduate from this situation. You know? So God will bring trials your way until you graduate, until you learn to submit it to him. And then, wow, when you experience something similar, you do not respond with the same anger, bitterness, resentment. You experience healing. I'm telling you that, wow, you know, when I faced that 
experience with the principal and I was so hurt and devastated in my life. Many for a few years after that, whenever I told the story, I would cry. Tears would come to my eyes. But after I experienced that healing, I could tell the story. I could remember the details, but that negative emotion was gone. And that's when I knew that I experienced the healing from the Lord. God wants to heal us and restore us fully and completely. There was a young lady who came down for a Maker Heals from Queensland. Her friend had told her about the program because she had gotten so depressed that she had spent two months lying in bed. She couldn't get up. If you have been in bed for an extended period of time, you know the how debilitating it is. It's hard to do anything. She wanted to get well, so she came to the program. The first few days, it was very tough for her, even to do the walking. But she did her best, did the walking, did her best drinking the water, doing everything. And as she was doing all these things, following the best she could, she was getting stronger. But the first, the first three days or so, I went in to check in on her, and she would have bouts of crying. She would have emotional breakdowns. But you know what switched for her was the lecture on forgiveness. When she realized that she had gotten depressed because she was not able to forgive her friend that had done injustice to her. But when she experienced forgiving that friend, she became transformed. She became a new person. On that, I don't know, I think it was a Sabbath, she was sharing her testimony, her experience. She became new, renewed. She became alive. She had feeling and expression. She had joy returned to her. Hopelessness had gone. All the feelings had gone. From that point forward, she was able to live a new life in truth, a new life in Jesus. After that, I saw her several months later. She said, I haven't been depressed once since I left the program. And in fact, I am engaged to be married. She was in a Bible program at that time, studying for four months that she might be a servant of the Lord. Do you have any unforgiveness in your hearts? Today, search your hearts. Spend time with the Lord and do not miss out on this opportunity. If there is anyone you need to forgive, forgive them. You may need to make a phone call. Talk to them. But you don't always have to talk to them to forgive. Do you know what I mean? Because forgiveness or unforgiveness is within ourselves. Unforgiveness, is, people liken it to this. It's like you drinking poison and you're hoping that the other person will get poisoned and die. You're hurting yourself. The other person has no idea about anything. They may not even be thinking about the situation. And another analogy is that it's like somebody is renting a room in your head, in your mind, but they're not paying anything. They're staying in your mind rent free. They're taking up space. That is unforgiveness. If you are holding on to any kind of unforgiveness, you are bound. You don't have that freedom. But once you give that completely to the Lord, He will set you free. We might not even be able to forgive we might have to say, Lord, please help me to forgive. Please give me the desire. Please give me obedience that I might forgive.
Please transform my heart that I may be able to forgive. Lord, I am willing to be made willing. Please help me. Now, forgiveness does not mean condoning somebody's actions. Forgiveness does not necessarily mean that you need to go back into a close relationship with them. You can forgive somebody, but stay at a distance. Do you know what I mean? It, you know, it's not even avoiding. It's like doing the right thing because they are harming you. If somebody is abusing you physically, emotionally, verbally, sexually, don't stay by them. God is not calling us to stay there. All right? You can separate and still forgive. You can still pray for them and pray for their eternal salvation. And when God gives them healing and restoration, when we meet again, maybe even in heaven, we can be joyful and we can say, I am so glad that you are in heaven. With a clear conscience, we can say, I am so happy. I love you, but I don't have to be in a daily relationship with you. God wants to give us complete, full restoration. Do you want to receive it? Yes. Is there anybody you need to forgive? Yes? Yeah? Or can you show me your hands? Do you need, is there anyone you need to forgive? Because some of you are just like, yeah, so cool and calm, collected. I was like, maybe I'm not talking to the right group of people about this topic. <laughs> Okay, if you have someone, some people to forgive, today is the day. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Experience freedom today. Yes? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for dying on the cross for us on behalf of all of our sins. Lord, please, Forgive us fully for, yeah, everything, Lord, for all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness, all of our mistakes, all of our selfishness, pride, everything and anything that keeps us from close relationship with you. Oh, Lord, today I pray that you might send your Holy Spirit abundantly that each one of us may be led to repentance. Please help us that we might be able to forgive. Oh Lord, please give us the healing, the restoration, the transformation, the new heart that we long for. And I pray that you might help each one of my friends this morning to experience just a little bit more of the healing, of the spiritual healing today. Thank you for your faithfulness that you promise to forgive us as we confess to you. I thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.